Bitwig 4.1 has finally released, and what does that mean for us? It means that we get to have fun. What's good, everybody? My name is Alchemy. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Bitwig 4.1 beta features, which is a short but sweet list. Before we do that, though, if you've been considering getting Bitwig, for one, they have a demo that is the full version that never expires. The caveat is that you can't save project or export anything. The second thing is wing. I've got merchandise available now. All the links are in the description. If you want to pick up Bitwig, there's 10% off, all that good stuff. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new features and see if you're missing out on the next upgrade. So hopping right in, the first thing that I'm most excited for is actually this device right here called Ricochet. And this allows us to have this really awesome kind of ping pong-ish ricocheting device that whenever you play a note, it will actually bounce off and create a, an effect kind of like this. You can see here that this is reflecting off of that. You can also control the size of the ball. You can control the size of the room, which affects the timbre. You can also affect the shape of this. And as you can see here with the randomizer, you can even modulate this. And if you turn the velocity up, that means that it's actually going to have a higher velocity towards how fast or how quickly the ball shoots. And to me, this is a wonderful device because it just creates an aliveness towards the way that you play any kind of MIDI that is input into it. So for example, if I were to play a chord, Let's go ahead and turn this down just a bit so that way it's not lasting quite as long. You can see here that while it's incredibly pleasant to look at, it also sounds really nice because there's just a bunch of bouncing and reflections that go off of each other. You can rotate this if you want. You can change the shape from a triangle all the way to a decagon, I believe. And you can also change the way that this actually shoots out. So if right now it's clicked on random, so that means that it's gonna fire off in whatever direction. But you can also set this to bar to where you can see that this becomes like a little asteroid spaceship looking thing and it will fire off based off of where it is pointing. Or you can set this to phase where you can control this individually about where you want this to fire, which you can also set up your own randomization patterns. Say if you have something like this and you set this here and now in between this, we can go into there and we can set this to smooth. So now you can see that this is going to do its own thing and switch back and forth in between. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off and we're gonna go back into the random mode. And we're gonna take a look at the next thing, which is actually just as awesome. Now, the reason why I like this so much is because not only does it allow an extra depth of expression towards whatever it is that you're playing, but you can see here that this actually has a, albeit basic, but a step sequencer here where you can control whether or not you're strumming up and down. If you were playing something like guitar, you don't just strum one way. And a lot of times there are things that are like this, but you have to alternate in between or push another key to activate the MIDI in order to change the way that you express it. So if you were to step, set this into four different steps, you can go up, down, up, up, or down, up, down, or down, down, and put whatever direction that you want. And then you can set the time right here in which to kind of play this at, which would sound something like this. I'm gonna switch this back to one. If we were to turn on multi-note and play a deeper chord, you get something really nice like that. And this sounds great to me. And it's just, again, something that sounds really nice and adds a lot of expressiveness towards just playing one MIDI note. And that's pretty much what this new Bitwig update is all about, is really just how can you get the most out of playing MIDI? Because a lot of times the biggest drawback, even though with the technology of MPE, is that MIDI is still MIDI. And so sometimes it's very difficult in order for you to find something interesting that you like or make it seem like it's somewhat humanistic. <laughs> But I mean, how cool is that? I'm, play I'm pushing three notes. Let's go ahead and switch that back up. And using the new key filter, which is actually the diatonic transposer, you can actually set this into playing different scales and you can get some really expressive stuff that sounds pretty amazing. Man, I don't know about you, but this stuff really excites me just because of how pretty it sounds. So the next thing that we have is the randomize, and it's to be very clear, this is not a modulator. This is actually an effect, and what it does is it's based off of whenever you trigger a new MIDI note. So in order for this to work, it has to be triggered, and I think the easiest example of that is I'm going to hit the pitch off, and I'm going to continue pushing the same note. And whenever you turn this on, every time you hit a new MIDI note, it's actually going to trigger something different. Thank you. 
which is actually really cool for creating kind of like somewhat you know dreamy or nightmarish things for this particular sound but you can see here that we have choices between selecting between the velocity the pressure timbre pan and the gain and i actually like this because it's a simplified way to say well every time this hits i wanted to do something completely different it does not modulate or move over time and that's important to understand why this makes a difference between the regular random modulator say as something like this over here so we're going to go ahead and move on to another device that i actually really like especially for just creating cool expressions and that is the dribble effect and this is actually really cool because it allows you to have some sense of gravity now the way that i think about this effect is more so on a sense of like if you drop a coin or a quarter or something and it goes sorry for the sound effect but if you take a listen it sounds kind of something like this and over here you have these different controls based off of how you control the gravity so right now it's everything is set into time you can definitely change this into free mode where you set this over here and if we turn the damping down you can see that when you turn the damping down, it adds more bounce. But how cool is that? It's almost like an exponential rhythm, except it's being triggered via the MIDI. Super cool, man. I love this stuff. And again, a lot of this stuff is actually pretty basic, but at the same time, this allows you to have a lot of different controls. And I encourage you to explore this stuff on a lot of different sounds. I feel like they definitely resonate or make the most sense out of doing things that sound like bells and whatnot. But at the same time, I still really enjoy this kind of sound and these kind of effects because again, it just makes it really easy, especially for a sound designer like me. I can use this effect to send through a huge giant effect chain and kind of just see what comes out, especially when creating something that like, if you were to use something like dribble as a machine where it goes and then you have the pitch rise up with that at the same time via a different modulator. There's a lot of possibilities in within that and that's stuff that I'm excited to kind of check out in the future. Okay, so for this next type of stuff that I wanna take a look at, we're gonna be taking a look at all the things that actually react to MIDI that are more about rhythm and repetition. And the first thing that I wanna take a look at is this idea of the note repeats. And it's pretty much like a single arpeggiator, but there's a couple of different features that make it more simplified but also really neat and add more randomization so if i were to just play this at the repeats then you can see here that by the trigger of a single note that this will repeat and again we can play chords with this you can come down here and adjust the gate to make it shorter you can also adjust the decay and you can tell it's a hold until the next trigger on or off. You also have a randomization here to where it won't always play the same one. So if you're looking for a little bit of spice within that, you can see here that even though it's playing 1 16th, it's still kind of choosing something that's random. And this is kind of like a reminder or like an effect version of a lot of the stuff that you get within the operators that were introduced in the original 4.0. And they said, well, why don't we just make some of this stuff like as an effect as well? So that way, as opposed to having to do it over in the inspector panel, you can just treat it as a note effect. So by changing that, you also have a couple of different options. The first one is burst and you're greeted with this interesting graph right here where you can change the pattern and the length of the notes, the density, and you can even rotate the shape itself so right now we're sitting at five different things the yellow ones are of the louder velocity and then the smaller i guess dimmer lines are of playing velocity notes that are less apparent so if i were to play that same chord let me go ahead and change the randomization to 100 percent again Then you're greeted with a really cool repetition kind of like that to where it is still an arpeggiator, but you're getting a more apparent rhythm that way. And to me, that sounds really awesome. You can also adjust the length of this by having something kind of like this, and you'll get an effect like this. And if you wanted to, you can adjust the density to create more louder notes. Or adjust it in that way as well. 
Over here on the accents, this is the percent that the count is going to have the stronger notes as it refers to. So we can turn that up and you can see here that this is actually expanding, or you can turn this down and change the lower notes here as well to where the low velocity comes up. You can go ahead and click on the opposites where it'll flip the pattern, or you can also keep the accents if you want. Now my favorite one by this by far is the Euclidean mode because this allows you to have a really interesting rhythmic pattern with this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on multi-note for this because it's gonna make it sound more interesting. But check this out. You can see that you can create some really rich patterns with this and just by changing the length which is pretty much the note count you end up getting some patterns or some rhythms that would normally take a long time to set up Super cool. So definitely check this one out if you're looking for some interesting ways to add some spice to your arpeggiators or just, you know, use it on really anything, including drums, which all, that also works really well for. The next thing, Humanize, works best when you actually have some MIDI laid down. So if we go ahead and listen to something like this, I'm going to turn this back off for a second and just loop this and I'm going to turn the Humanize off for a hot sec. <laughs> Then if you change the human eyes on, then this is going to have the chance that it's actually going to play. So you can actually stop the chance that it's actually going to play itself. How pretty is that? And we can also shift the timing to where you have a zero delay and I've kind of already pushed it as far as it can go. So if we take a listen to this. And the more that you shift the timing on this, the more that it's going to add swing or note delay to this. So pretty, man. This is actually an excellent tool, especially if you want to use it on something like drums, because you can shift everything over to a sense of where it creates a lot more swing, but it's always going to be randomized. I do have a request, and I'm not really sure if this can be implemented or not, but it would really be cool if just like how you can do this in operators, it, or if there was an operator version of that, that would be even better to where you can humanize the rhythm as opposed to having to right click, go humanize, print it out, see how it looks. This is part of the answer, which I think is a great step in the right direction. But if you could do that and then bounce it as a seed, that would be even cooler. And I think that's something that we could all find a lot of use in, especially if you guys like to do kind of like your boom bab or lo-fi or any kind of swung hip hop or just swung music in general. You can also adjust the velocity to where it will kind of change that up and down as a randomizer, but the humanized aspect of that really adds some, well, humanization or personality towards the MIDI that you have. So the next thing that we have is the quantize. And this took a little time for me to understand, but pretty much what it is, is it helps you actually make chords because what it does is it's like borrowing. So if you've got MIDI over here, it'll actually take the MIDI from here and then place it on top of another MIDI note in order to create an interesting chord. So let me show you what I mean by that. If we turn this off, then this is what everything sounds like. Keep in mind that there's a multi-note on here. I don't actually have chords. I feel like this would actually work better in this way uh, with the multi-note. So that way you can only have to push one note at a time, but take a listen. <laughs> Now I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to set this to eighth notes and listen to how this creates chords for us. Now, while I would argue that these might not be the most elegant chords, you're still getting some interesting things. We can also change the timing of this of when this creates chords for us. So. If you haven't noticed already, something that is really beautiful about all this stuff is that you can actually set modulators to transfer or to toggle, rather, all of these things on and off. 
So if you're really trying to get an expressive performance or something, you can either do this with macros, you can do it with a MIDI controller, or you can do it with modulators like an LFO or a randomizer in order to really get a lot of MIDI note expressions. And then for someone like me who prefers to work in audio, something that you can do with that is bounce it out to audio and just take the coolest bits and create your own arrangements that are all set in time or humanized or whatever it is that you want. So aside from changing the timing of this, you can also change the forgiveness to where it's not doing that every time. So every once in a while, you'll get the same kind of pattern as you originally had. Like how cool is that? You can also turn the delay off if you want. So this will kind of make sure that there are no delays within the tune. Hear that whenever the delay is or the delay off button is turned on that everything hits right on that note whenever you have it set to within the interval so the next feature that i have is actually a sleeper and this is super interesting because what you can do with this is essentially create some call and response or do a lot of different things that kind of has a series of chains that are triggered and let me show you what i mean with this in particular i have a soundscape built into where this is something that i typically do so if i were to play that it would sound like this Super cool. So with that, what you can do is you can actually set a release now and what you can do is add another sampler or add any other instrument in within this. And what it will do for you is it will trigger it whenever the MIDI stops. So if I were to turn this sampler on, if I were to push this button and hold, uh, you can watch the MIDI here over in the right. Whenever the MIDI stops being triggered, it will actually fire this for a second and trigger something else. So take a listen. So as you listen to this, you can tell that it basically triggers this as a sequence. And this is really cool for me personally because this is a great way to create some interesting call and response. And for me personally, I think that it's something to definitely experiment with as you can set a long trigger as long as you keep using samplers. So this one is connected to the sampler, which is connected to another sampler. And then you can see here that I've been experimenting with different note repeats and different note delays and stuff to see if I can make this react in other ways. And for me personally, I think that this is an excellent tool to experiment with. And again, allows you to do this much with a single note. So if you were to think about, you know, combining this with a certain kind of call and response, say even with a 4-4 kick or something, you can get a really easy kind of dark techno tune or anything of the sort in order to create a lot of different movement and motion. <laughs> And that's a great way to actually start off the tune and create something that's really interesting. So the last note effect that we have is called the bend. And what I've done is gone ahead and made a bass that sounds like this. And what we can do with the bend is it's a really fast way to add a quick pitch bend to where it will save you the time of having to do an envelope. So if I turn this on, then you can see here that we've got the amount of pitch semitones and then we've got our shape here. And then we can also set this to a specific timing. So if I set this to a quarter beat and I play things here, you'll hear how it should have a mm. And if you want it to be quicker, let's say if you're designing kicks or something. then it's a really cool way to get a lot of interesting bass stabs and stuff. And then of course you can also set it to be the opposite way as well. Maybe you want this to have some kind of riser up into the normal pitch and you want this to take a long time. So you can do something kind of like this, which is really cool. Maybe let's set it at a half. Or if you want it at a quarter note, let's say if you've got a beat going or something and you want it to be like And then again, you can also change the curve. I 
I like that a lot. You can also offset it if you want, so. Super cool. So that's pretty much it for all of the effects, but there is one more trick, and this might perhaps be actually one of my favorite things about this update. I'm not sure if you noticed or not, but some of the colors that were on my timeline are a little bit different. If you look over here, whenever you select either a clip or a track, you can see that we actually have something called color palettes now. And by default, we've got five new ones, including Classic, Ice Pops, Kelvin, Madeira, or Overcast. But what you can do is you can actually import from an image. So if I grab this image and I drag it way over here towards this, you can see that now the window is highlighted and I'll click this. And now you can see that we've got our own color palette. We can name this Bitwig Thumbnail, hit OK. Now you can see here that I've got the full range of this color palette and I can choose from that from the user. Now, one key thing about this is that if you want to delete this, then what you can do is come into here, go into wherever you have your Bitwig stuff. So you can go into Bitwig and then you can actually see here during your color palettes that that's where that saves. So if you wanna get rid of it, you can do something like that. So if we go here, you'll see that this is gone and it's gone for you. So that way you can always add. So my suggestion to you is that if you actually wanna find some color palettes on the internet, say, you know, you wanna find something interesting, you can go to google.com and find online color palette, find the image that you want, and you have to make sure that you download, you know, something that is going to be a JPEG. I think a PNG also works. Let's go ahead and find this one, see if that works. This one's a JPEG. So again, we can drag it in like this. And it does as good of a job as it possibly can. It's not going to be perfect because I think it divides everything to a certain amount of colors, but you can still see here that we've got a lot of different colors to choose from now. And by choosing these, you've got all of these different shades. And to me, that is just absolutely awesome. Now it's not a wheel color or you know something of an actual spectrum, but I think that this is still an amazing step in the right direction, especially because it kind of like picks and choose the color palettes that you want to put together in the first place. So I've taken like Metroid things, I've taken things from Warframe, I've taken all different kinds of pictures and already loaded them up, but this is just another way to add colors to you know the already colorful Bitwig. And that's one of the biggest things that I like about it is Bitwig has always been pro color. I do have a wish list if Bitwig is watching this. Two things. One, I really would like a way to change this orange through all these buttons. Give me purple, please. I love that we can make everything else black. It's totally fine if you know skins are a big deal. But the other thing that I would really like is I really hope that at some point you bring back the rainbow colored dials. I remember when we did that in the 3.0 beta and I know that some people didn't like it, but for people like me, I'm actually very color centric and I love that I can tie a color to a frequency range. And so if we can allow that on all the dials that control any kind of frequency, that would really make my day with the color palettes aside from you know skins and stuff or whatever. So with this update, I think that one of the big things with Bitwig is that they always challenge the creativity. And I, I really think that Bitwig has a vision for where they want their DAW to go. And it might not be necessarily what everybody's looking for, but so far I'm kind of just like, I'm along for the ride. And even if it doesn't necessarily work for the workflow that I have right now, it's always extra options that are accessible. And that to me is the biggest thing with Bitwig is that as opposed to a lot of other DAWs, some specific more than others, this says, well, if you wanna make music like this, here you go. If you wanna make music like this, here you go, you wanna do audio, it's got exceptional audio editing if you wanna do MIDI. It doesn't have the scales and stuff that some other things do, but it's got all this other stuff that you probably never even thought of before. And that is something that makes Bitwig stand out unique as opposed to something that it's always compared to, say like, you know, Ableton, right? So with all that out of the way, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully this demo was at least somewhat intriguing to you. Let me know in the comment section whether or not you guys want to either update if you guys made it into the beta or if you guys have a wish list for future, you know, requests or anything that might be available in a future iteration of Bitwig. Thanks, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.